Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Camelized Detail Garage. Today we are back with the beater and we notice its headlights are fairly gone. They're dull, they're neglected. So in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to properly wet sand them. So let's get to it. So to begin the process, we need to start by cleaning them off. Even though I already cleaned them, I'm just gonna use clay luber as a lubricant just to wipe them off. So just spray it on there and then I'll grab a soft microfiber towel and just wipe them in one direction. This is just so I can make sure any loose grime or debris can just remove so I won't be rubbing it in whenever I'm cleaning. So clean it, now it's clean. So a common factor is you drive a beater, you don't care about it and over time your headlights can possibly turn dull, they don't shine as much, or you can't even have any light going out of it. And we always recommend having the best visibility during the daytime or nighttime, or wherever you might be, have the best vision. So before anything, you always need to clay the headlights before wet sanding. So I'll be using the medium duty clay bar. So the medium duty clay bar is going to help me remove any contamination that is in the pores of the headlight. Why should I reclay before, even though I'm going to wet sand? I recommend you guys claying the headlight before, beforehand because if you do not clay it, you're gonna be rubbing in all the contamination back into the headlight, which can potentially scratch it and damage it even more. So I just ripped off a small portion. Now I'll roll it into a little ball. And once it's into a little ball, you just want to squeeze it down, either into a pancake method or a hot cake. Whatever you may call it, make sure to comment down below. Let me know what you guys call it, because I call it a pancake. So now it's at a pancake form. It's a perfect three finger width. If you have never worked with clay bar, it's, it's a very sticky substance, so it does not fall. Three fingers, I like to go that way because I have more control in hand. And then I'll be using clay luber. Clay luber is going to help me lube up the surface, so whenever I glide the clay bar over this area, it glides over perfectly, and I am not causing marring because yes, you could cause clay marring on headlights. So just go to the surface, and you guys can hear I'll be quiet. All of that graspiness is just the contamination that's sitting on the headlight. And yes, most people will say, why would you even clay bar? Why would you restore the headlight if it's just a beater? But keep in mind, you might have someone in the car or even yourself and you want to stay safe at all times. See, seem perfect is the best because I've driven around with hazy headlights. And honestly, whenever you go into like a very dark area, it can be very, very hard to see. So that's why we recommend restoring your headlights. So if I flip it back over, you can see there's a little bit of contamination on it and we just want to ensure we get a perfect smooth to a touch finish. So after that, I'll remold it into a new area, back into a ball, and then I'll redo it until the surface turns smooth to a touch. So get my clay, spray it again. And whenever you're using a clay luber, don't be stingy with it because if you are stingy with it, like I said, if you go over a dry area, you can potentially cause clay marring and you can permanently damage your headlight. Same goes on paint. On paint, you'll just go ahead and have to repolish it out. And that's an extra step in the detailing process that you can technically avoid if you do it properly. So put the clay bar down. I'll put it back in its package for our next user to use it. A clay bar can be used up to 10 times, up to 20 times, and you probably use it by cutting it up into small portions. Don't use the biggest clay bar whenever using it. Use a small portion of it just in case if you drop it, pick it back up and you can reuse it. So now the clay did its job. The headlights are smooth. We're gonna be moving on to the wet sanding process. So what is the wet sanding process? The wet sanding process is sandpaper mixed with water. Yes, that is correct. So right here I have my 2500 grit with my pink flex pad. It has a sticky back, so I can just attach it to the back, just like so. Attach it on there. And then, why would you do the wet sanding process? So the wet sanding process works amazing on headlights that are fairly far gone. If, for example, you use our headlight restorer and it does not bring it back, then you might need to do the wet sanding process. This is why I am doing the wet sanding process on this Toyota Corolla because we did a test spot and it did not do anything to it. So I have my sandpaper ready, I have my water, my secondary spray bottle. All I have to do is just spray it on here and just glide it over the headlight. And you'll start seeing this milkiness come out. 
All of that is just dead plastic. Look at that. And you gotta keep it very lubricated. Same exact thing. You do not want to have a dry spot whenever you're doing a head light restore. Ration. So the 2500 grit is going to help me remove all the dead plastic that is sitting on the headlight without damaging it. So just scrub it back and forth. And now I'll get my microfiber towel and I'll wipe off in one direction just to inspect the headlight. Always, whenever you're doing a headlight restoration, constantly go back and inspect it. Make sure it's smooth. Like right here, it's still rough, so I need to do a second pass. Versus over here, it's completely smooth. So I'll get my water. And just scrub it out. And then after you finish doing the wet sanding process with the 2500 grit, if I wipe it down, it's going to turn very, very hazy. But don't be freaking out because that is the process to get a clear vision. So look at that. It's going to haze up on me. But that is just because I just sanded those areas. So whenever I polish it, I'll be refining the finish and bringing back its shine. So now we have to refine the sanding marks. This is when we get rid of our 2500 grit and we move on to the 3500 grit. The 3500 grit goes on the same exact way. It has a sticky back. You just line it up perfectly. We're good to go. So now I'll get my water. So I'll spray down the area. Spray my sanding block. And I'll just do the same exact thing all over. So this is going to refine any of the other scratches that the sandpaper might have done. It's going to help me remove them. It's going to help me restore them. So doing the proper steps when doing a headlight restoration is going to ensure you get a perfect finish at the end. Excuse if it's loud or people are passing by. It is very busy here at the detail garage. So just bear with me. So just go back and forth. Make sure you hit every corner. The benefits of having a headlight restoration kit is you can restore your headlights multiple times. You're not going to have to be spending thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars on headlights that can simply be restored. So wipe in one direction. And you already see the headlight is already coming back from how it started. When I started, it was a little bit much yellow, but now I inspected it. Let me just wipe it down. I need to make sure that everything's good to go. So now I realize it's completely good to go. It's time to polish it. So today I'll be using the Torque R. So the Torque R is a rotary with a, that has a three inch bagging plate with a four inch pad. So I'll shake up Headlight Restore because Headlight Restore is gonna be, be the polish I'll be using today. I'll apply four dots onto my pad. One, two, three, four. So now that I already have four dots on my pad, I'll get my pad conditioner and spray it onto my pad. What is pad conditioner? Pad conditioner is going to help me moisten the pad so I won't cause any friction or pigtails on the headlight. So before I start polishing, I'll put the cord over my shoulder so I won't be hitting the paint with the cord. I'll go to the area, I'll dab it out, and then I'll work it in on the highest speed. So make sure it's completely spread out. And if you do not have a polisher, make sure to just get a drill attachment, hop on our website, pick up a drill attachment bagging plate and the drill screw, and you'll be set. So now, since it is a rotary, I do not turn on the machine when it's already on the headlight. I'll turn it on away from the headlight, then I'll go on to it. So let's get to it.
Wow, that is a big before and after. I mean, there, it's clear. There's, I can see the light bulb. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I can see the light bulb. So guys, let me finish up this headlight and I'll get back to you guys once I already have everything done. And wow, there's a huge before and after from before I had this Corolla. This Corolla's headlights were yellow, grimy. I couldn't even see the light bulb in it. And now that I did the wet sanding process and I polished it out using Headlight Restore, I can actually see through the headlight and I wonder how the visibility is going to be at night. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot much better. These headlights were dull, neglected, and I brought them back using the wet sanding method. I saved hundreds of dollars and they look amazing, especially because it's on a beater car. And don't forget guys, Headlight Restore actually has a sealant in it. So if you do not have a sealant on hand, that is completely fine because Headlight Restore is a polish with a sealant that will protect your headlights from yellowing over time. Guys, if you guys like this video, don't forget to check out the links down below where we link every single product we use on this video so you can never be lost. And comment down below on future videos you wanna see and we'll see you guys next time right here at the Camel Guys Detail Garage. Look at that. Look at that, you see that?